Okay, the Biblical Truth of Our Hymns, 57th hymn that we're doing by Charles Wesley, Arise, My Soul Arise. I had to go through a lot of garbage hymns from the last one that we did to this one. Arise, my soul, arise. And the new birth of our soul the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is wake up and for the Christian we need a constant reminder to get up wake up we fall asleep at the helm shake off thy guilty fears there's only one way it says the bleeding sacrifice in my behalf appears our guilty fears does not rely on drugs it doesn't rely on alcohol. That That's only temporal. T tobacco ain't going to do it. Doctors can't do it. Reaching our mind into outer trips of crossing your legs and meeting with your inner self is not going to erase your guilty fear. We stand guilty. and When we're guilty, we need a pardon. <coughs> and pardons are only granted by those that are guilty. I'm a guilty sinner. And there's only one thing I can do if I confess my sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is nothing else that can shed our sins away but the shedding of the Lord, Lord, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this modern world Christianity, there's no repentance. Join the church, get baptized, do this, do that. Shake off that guilty fear. The bleeding sacrifice, capital S, in my behalf appears. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. A personal testimony of Charles Wesley and for us Christians. Before the throne, my surety stands. Now, I got a note here, one. It says, surety, one who becomes legally liable for another debt. And it's a loan accounting term. Before the throne, my surety, the one that has paid my debt, capital S, the Lord Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father. Which means, my Savior, my salvation, my sacrifice is alive and well and in heaven and still not in the graveyard. Preachers, pastors, priests, rabbis, whatever you call your church leader, popes, are still in the grave. Imams are still in the grave, but not our Lord Jesus Christ. The one that is liable for our sins through his atonement that was pleasing to God upon Calvary's hill. There he sits. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And that surety, which is a word that can be used in two ways. He is my legal liability of my debt. And yet, I am sure, I have assurance of what Jesus Christ is doing. My surety stands before the throne. My surety stands. My name is written on his hands, where the nails were. Where the Bible still says in the Old Testament prophesy, the nail prints are in his hands. How much does Jesus love you? Look at his hands. Look at his feet. Look at the hole in his side. God's blood, Acts 20, 28, spilt out. God's blood, Jesus' blood, is what washed away our sins. So we go into, he ever lives above. He's living, he's not dead. And he's not going to die at every mass. So we can eat him. My God suffered and died once, Hebrews says, and he's not ever going to die again. 
One death, one finished work. Lives above for me to intercede. God, our Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, intercedes and prays for us as the Holy Spirit does also. Not only do we pray, but our Savior prays. Not only does our Savior pray, but He makes intercession for us. Not only does He make intercession for us, but He's our mediator. And He, he talks to the Father about us. And in God's anger of, of our being sinners, Father, it's under the blood. He's our son. Lord, he needs. He desires. We must. To improve him. And sometimes we may not like that. His all-redeeming love. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. The all-demon love of God is the all-demon love of Jesus. We love Him because He first loved us. His precious blood to be plead. What do I plead when I sin? I plead the blood. His blood atoned for all our race. Whatever sex you are, whatever race you are, whatever age you are, that atoning blood is able to save us the uttermost. That blood that is removed from Bibles, that blood that is removed from churches today, <coughs> is the only, is the only remedy that can wash away our sins. His blood atoned for our, all our race and sprinkles now the throne of grace. Where do, what do we get from God, from grace? How do we get that grace? We get it through the blood. I don't get grace by what I do. For by grace we are saved through faith. And not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. I don't do anything to earn the grace. But the grace I do get from God is by what Jesus Christ has done upon Calvary's cross. Cleanses us. Loves us. Five bleeding wounds he bears, two in the hands, two in the feet, and one in the side. Acts 20:28. 20, God's blood. The precious blood of the Lamb without spot, without wrinkle. Holy and righteous, without sin. Jesus Christ, the sinless, suffered and died for us. He made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of him through the righteousness of God through him. Received on Calvary. There are people today in the island nations of the Pacific. And they beat themselves and they do penance. And there are penances all over the world of the Catholic faith. I'm going to shed my blood on these stairs. I'm going to shed my blood ever, however they do it. But it's not upon Calvary's cross. Blood shed upon the cross of Calvary is the gospel and is the only blood of the sinless one. That's the offering of God. If your blood came from anywhere else for salvation, uh, I got blood. My blood comes in a little cup that's, that you know I got from my priest. That's not of Calvary. The chances are it's probably of Italy or California. And those places are definitely ain't going to save your soul. They, what? The bleeding wounds and that was on Calvary, they pour out effectual prayers of the one who's interceding for us, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, believe it or not, when he, when he died on that cross, according to scriptures, when he was buried, when he arose again according to the scriptures, and he was 40 days with the disciples after his resurrection, and he was caught up to, to the clouds into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. Now as far as salvation and atonement, that work is finished. But the, the, the work of Jesus for the church is not. 
He is praying for us right now. He is pleading to the Father right now. The Holy Spirit is, is communicating with us that's dwelling in us, our comforter to help us do. There are Christians right now who are about to do wrong, who are about to sin, or if not, are sinning. The Holy Spirit is actually, don't do this. You're doing it. And God and Jesus is heaven saying, Father, I know what they're doing. I would almost assume it's a 24-hour activity between the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ pleading and interceding for us. They pour out effectual prayers. The wounds. I saved them, Father. Can you imagine the son holding out to the Father in those wounds? Father, I saved them. And the father bows his head and looks at the feet of his son. Picks up his feet and he sees the hole in the side. I remember, son. Something like that. Effectual prayers, they strongly plead for me. I don't know how many times the prayers of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ has gotten me out of trouble. I don't know how many times the interceding of Jesus and the Holy Spirit has gotten me through trouble. Job 1 and 2 says, when you're, when you're active with the Lord and doing right, the devil comes up and says, well, let me go get him. And the mercy of grace is God telling the devil, you can only go so far. That adversary, the devil, wants to devour us. And God says, oh, so far. You can go only so far. Forgive him. Forgive him, oh, forgive, they cry. What the blood say to the Father? Forgive him. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Now, how are you going to say when this hymn about the gospel and about the new birth and about the atonement of Jesus, how are you going to say when you said, Father, see the water? When the Bible said, I, I forget, blood and water or water and blood that flowed out of Jesus. Father, see the water? <laughs> That don't do it. God, see how good I am. And God looks at those nail prints in the hands of Jesus and says, yeah, that's not good enough. Father, see what I've done. Jesus, see what I've done in your name. And depart from me, you work as iniquity. I never knew you. It is the wounds and it is the blood that pleads out. Forgive them, Father. We're the ones that can forgive and only. For, uh, forgive them. Oh, forgive, they cry. Nor let that ransom sinner die. God uses us when we're alive. I know the Bible says absent from the body, present with the Lord, and precious in the sight is, is the death of the saints and God. But when you do well, I'm not saying great, when we do well by what God has told us to do, there are other Christians out there that are not doing well. And their death would be, okay, you know, they died, they haven't helped anybody. But when I confess my sins and I want to be right with God, Lord God, let him not die because he's doing right. Though I shouldn't sin, my sins are keeping the blood flowing and doing what it's supposed to be doing until the rapture of the church. And if I'm trying to confess my sin, if I'm trying to do right by God and, and 
trying to prove that fellowship, then I'm trying to serve God. And there's a purpose that God has for me. And when my days on this earth are gone and I have died, uh, the purpose of God is no longer on this earth for me. And then don't let me die in my sins. And I will. And when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, there would will be wood, hay, or stubble. I guarantee. And as for you, the Father hears him pray. Does it say the Father hears us pray? No. The Father hears Jesus pray. God heard our prayer. <laughs> Through the interceding of the Holy Spirit and the interceding of Jesus. God, I need a brand new car. The Holy Spirit uh, talks with Jesus and say, you know what he needs? He needs a smack in the head. That's what he needs. Father, he needs some scolding. See, God doesn't provide our wants. He provides our needs. There's a big difference between needs and wants. And if we do pray right, it's only through the intersection of the Holy Spirit and the intersection of Jesus Christ that we are heard. Though we sit in the heavenly place, though we can come boldly to the throne, how do we come to that throne through the Lord Jesus Christ? Other than that, there is no entrance because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father by salvation. No man cometh unto the Father by prayer except by me. So there we are before the throne of grace and we're there by Jesus and our prayers are being interpreted through Jesus to make sure the proper prayers get through and not the stupid ones we have. Because we don't even know what we need to be praying for. I don't. His dear anointed one, capital A, capital O, Jesus Christ. Anointed means Christ. And Christ means anointed. Jesus anointed. Jehovah saves anointed. When you get Christ Jesus, you get the anointed Jehovah saves. He cannot turn away the presence of his son. Isn't it great that my salvation is so secure? These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I'm never going to lose it. Even if I think I can lose it, I can't lose it. Because in the presence of Jesus Christ, in the merit of Jesus Christ, and in the life, death, and burial, resurrection of Jesus, am I secure? Am I sure? That word we, we looked at earlier. The only way I could lose it is God says to Jesus, get out of here. Scram. Skedaddle. God is not going to tell himself to get out. And that's the danger of Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, Jesus is not God and God's not Jesus. God is Jesus. Jesus is God and God's not going to tell himself to get lost. So all my all and all and everything all rests upon God telling the Son, Welcome. Here you are forever dwell because you're me and I am you. And Jesus is never going to rebel against God. His spirit, his spirit answers to the blood. His spirit answers to the blood. The blood of what? Jesus Christ. Not of bulls and goats. It's all upon Jesus, who is God. The three in one. And tells me, I am born of God, the new birth. This whole hymn centers around Jesus. This whole hymn centers around the blood. I bet you it's not sung in churches today. This whole hymn surrounds itself with the new birth. This whole hymn surrounds us up that Jesus is not sitting up in heaven twiddling his thumbs. He's praying for us. 
Father, that sin that you're angry with, with that sinner, it has been put through my blood. My blood has washed that away. Now forgive and forget. Father, that one down there, he's, he, he's in trouble. He has knees. He's praying to you. And the Holy Spirit's reaching out. And I'm reaching out for that sinner. And he may need more heat. <laughs> he may need more troubles. You say, God wouldn't do that. <laughs> As a father chastises his son, so the father that loves his children. I'm a child of God. I'm born of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus and the Holy Spirit know what's better for me, not me. And maybe the Holy Spirit and, and uh, you know, he needs okay, a little easement. A little, he needs a little more blessings. He needs a few taken away. He needs to be chastised for that. And chastised is not evil, wicked, and wild that the American public school system and DCF would have you think. It's a loving thing that, hey, I love you and I want you to do right. Look at the children today who are not being chastised, who are given medication, who is given therapy, who is given the opportunity to have the whole world bend down and kiss their little baby behind. Look what they're doing. Just walk out in the middle of the street without looking both ways. Oh, you don't worry about pain. Oh, yeah, you can sue them. And you can get loads of money, but that don't get rid of the pain. And you can sue them, then they can go bankrupt, and you ain't going to get nothing. Chastisement, though it does not feel good, it helps and it builds up the strength of your conscience for God, for the Son, and for the Holy Spirit. I thank God that my mom corrected me when I was a child. Because she put into me a conscience. And she put into me, I'm 51 years old. And when I st sin, I still, you know, I don't want to be beat. I don't want to get in trouble. I need to owe up to it. And I've done that in the workplace. There have been things I've done wrong. I've gone right into the boss. I say, boss, I, I closed the door. I did it. <laughs> You're going to about to hear it, maybe. If you don't, I'm going to tell you. This is what I did. <laughs> let that ransom sinner, let not let that ran, nor let that ransom sinner die. We're in a, I'm on the wrong line. Tells me I am born of God. There, I'm back on track. I am born of God. As Abraham was born of God. I mean, as Adam was born of God. As Jesus Christ was born of God. I am born of God. Through Jesus Christ. Through Calvary. Through the gospel. And nothing else. My God is reconciled. That means he got right. His pardoning. Mean. That means you're guilty. If you're not guilty, you are not going to get a pardon. You want a pardon? Yes. Are you guilty? Yes. Here it is. Do you want a pardon? Yes. Are you guilty? Well, you know, it was it was it my grew up growing. It was my great great grandparent. It was this. It was my friends. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. All right, stay in jail. I had the first night I did prison. I went in there with this great elegant message. And at the message at the point in time I said Anybody, and now listen, I'm in a prison. There are prisoners before me. I said, anybody in this room who is innocent, I want you to lift your hand straight up in the air. And every single hand went up, and I said, I can't help you. I can't give you no pardon. Now, that's not what I expected. No man in that room that, that night was able to get a pardon because they were innocent. I'm guilty. I stand guilty as a sinner, though I'm saved. Sorry to say so. And if I confess my sins, I can get that pardon. I don't want to do my sins. But sometimes I do, and sometimes I do want to sin. Then I get remorse. 
And the reconciliation getting right with God is through Jesus Christ alone, through the Holy Spirit that dwells in me of the sacrifice of the Calvary's cross and no one else. His parting voice I hear. If thou should confess thy sins. And that's conditional. You don't have to. But I advise you to. That verse there, 1 John 1, 9. It's, you don't have to. Don't do it. You don't have to. Don't. Don't complain at the judgment seat of Christ when it all burns up. Don't complain when it burns up because you want to do the sin and then oh, then you go confess. He owns me as his child. God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. That's my child. That's my son. I got a greater father than father devil. John 8, 44. I am his son. I can no longer fear. Now that's damnation, condemnation. I can fear the chastisement. Oh boy, God's going to get me for this one. I've known it's coming. I've done things and now, yep, it's going to come. I don't fear the wrath of God because I have the son. And when I do get ashes, wood, hay, or stubble, I'm going to fear how God's going to look at me and what's going to happen, but he ain't going to disown me at the judgment seat of Christ. He's just not going to reward me. He's not going to be an American parent. Oh, that's okay. You're a bad boy. You still get it. Why is it that Santa Claus knows you've been naughty and nice and he still gives you presents when you've been naughty? Oh, you know, last November you started to be a good boy. Okay, I'll give you presents. Two months out of 12, you were good. God and Jesus are not Santa Claus. And yet God is mercy and gracious that if we put our sins through the blood, then it's forgotten, it's cleansed, and it's forgiven. I can no longer fear. With confidence I now draw nigh. With confidence I draw nigh. What do I do? I approach the most holiest throne ever. Ever. I can walk into the Oval Office right now in Washington, D.C., and I can have the Secret Service put me in handcuffs and put me in a federal jail. I was never invited. I can walk into the most royal room in England where Queen Elizabeth, I could walk into her royal throne room and have Scotland Yard or whoever there, I can have them arrest me and put me in their federal jail. I was invited. I can step into Russia in the Kremlin, step in before the Russian president, right before his presence, and I can be arrested. But I step in a holy, righteous, almighty God, Jehovah. I step in his throne. He looks at me, yes, son. What can I do for you? Even Esther, married to the king, uh, you know, if you don't bite me, you don't hold up that golden scepter, I may die. I step in the holy presence of God through Jesus, and what may I do for you? Esther said, oh, if I can have a meal with Haman to hang him. Okay. The birthday celebration of Herod, oh, I get the belly dancer girl and get the head of John the Baptist. God's not going to do that. I step in the presence and say, God, if I could, if it would not do me any harm, I would like this. And God would, would interpret through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, okay, what about this prayer? Would it be a holy answer? Or would it be a whole unholy answer? And God, you know, he's only going to answer the holy prayer. 
I'm his child. I get to go into. I've had places of, uh, where I work, and I've been in a kind of authority. But there, there have been places where I have not been allowed unless I knock on the door. And I have been in those places where the, where the the owner has been in their office, and I've watched the wife and I watched the kids as open the door and run in. They don't need to knock. I have to. I am a child of God. I don't need to knock. I can go right in, Father. Father Abba, Father cry. When I cry Father, not like the Catholic Father, when I cry Father, that is my dad. That is my Father, not only by Jesus Christ. No woman involved. There's one meeting between God and man. The man Christ Jesus marries a female. She don't fit. So wake up your soul if you're saved. And they have fallen asleep. Peter's lying in jail and, he, and he's, he's sleeping. And the Lord goes, I got work for you. Smack right across the face. You get up. I'm sleeping, Lord. Get up. This is not the time to sleep. Jonah, get up! I got a message for you. Stop sleeping inside that boat. Get up! Elijah, what are you doing sleeping? Oh, you know, all the prophets and all that, you know, they're, they're being killed and I'm the only one. Shh, look, Elijah, Elijah. There have been prophets that have not kissed the lips of Baal and his feet and all that. I got some, rise, get up. I got you to go to Elijah. And then one day, the rapture is going to happen. And our bodies are going to rise to meet our souls that have been present with the Lord. I don't know if the graveyard is going to bust open, but our bodies are going to rise one day. That thing is a flesh. You don't want you don't want your body to rise. Say, I have lost flesh, sin. No, you got to bury that. You gotta get the pick and shovel and bury the body and have the soul arise. What which is holy and righteous. Let that live in you. Not the flesh. I credit this one to be sung. I almost guarantee today's churches it is not sung. 